Hi there. Thank you for watching this clip on finding derivative of this big, cumbersome, ugly fraction. So let's get started. We're going to use two methods. Method one, I'm going to use quotient rule. Quotient rule says I'm going to do the square on the bottom, okay, and then you're going to take derivative of the first one, which is 2x plus 4. Leave the second one alone, which is 2x plus 4. Second one meaning the denominator. Minus, now this is mi minus make it important that it, the derivative of the first one top goes first because minus is a uh, order sensitive. So next one is x squared plus 4x plus 4 and take derivative of the second one which is 2. Okay, now let's simplify this one. There's a factor of 2 there. I'm going to do 2x plus 2. The whole thing is squared. So I have a 4x plus 2 squared. In the bottom. And on top, I have, um, I'm going to do a 2 here and 2 here, and then I have a 4x plus 2 squared as well. And then I have minus 2, uh, factor that one out, and I have x plus 2 squared. And this actually turned out to be a pretty nice one. So this one is twice of x squared on top, and then 4 and on the bottom. So I have x prime of x equal to half. And then f double prime x is really z z easy. It's just a zero because it's a constant. Okay, now that's method one. Method one, which is simply use the quotient rule. Let's do the second method. This time, I'm going to rewrite this one and take derivative. I set it up over here in that I'm going to use product rule. It's little. Uh, counterintuitive that uh, you have in a quotient form, why would you want to use product rule? Well, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not easier. Let's take a look at, for our case, what happens. I'm going to write 2x plus 4 to the minus 1. Minus 1 means 1 over 2x plus 4. Okay, from here, I'm allowed to use product rule. Product rule has a adding sign in the middle, so it's orderless in that it doesn't matter which one you take derivative first, but since for the quotient rule, we always take derivative of the first term, i.e. the top term. We're going to follow the same method here. Derivative of the first one, which is 2x plus 4. We're going to leave the second one alone, which is 2x plus 4 to the minus 1. Add, okay, now second term is a little more cumbersome, but it's not difficult. Leave the first one alone. Take derivative of the second one. Now, derivative of the second one is a little messier. It's minus 1. We've got to get a 2x plus 4 to the minus 2, and then times 2. This factor of 2 is from the derivative of 2x. Okay, we've got to use chain rule here. Now, what a mess here. This one cancels out because this term is really 1 over 2x plus 4. So we have a 1 for the first term plus Let's see what we have for the second one. We have a 2x plus 4 on the bottom. This is minus 2 power here. I have a minus 2, and then I have a complete square for this one, x plus 2 squared. Oh, what a mess. Okay, there's a square here. Uh, let's add them together. I have a 2 squared, x plus 2 squared. So I factor the 2 out, and then minus 2 x plus 2 squared, everything over 2 squared x plus 2 squared. Once again, what I did down the bottom is 2x plus 4, the whole thing squared is really equal to 2 times x plus 2, the whole thing squared. Thus, it's equal to 2 squared x plus 2 squared. All right, it's almost there. I have a 4 on top, so I'm going to subtract it and I have a twice of x plus 2 squared, and on the bottom I have a 4x plus 2 squared. Now, what do you know? We have exactly the same answer, which is half. Prime of x equal to half. Well, our road leads to Rome, and f double prime of x equal to 0 as well. Okay, That's how we handle this type of problem. Hope it's clear. If you liked this video, please vote like or leave a comment and let me know if it helped you. Thank you, and until next time, have a confident day.